We're going to take a look at the Moto X, which is the first smartphone to come from Motorola since they were acquired by Google last year. It also represents their first efforts to try to get back into the market as a player since losing the top spot many years ago. I think the timing for this is pretty good. There's a lot of interest right now in seeing Android phones come directly from Google. To see phones that can offer a native Android experience where the innovations are restricted mainly to hardware and design. Unfortunately, the design aspect of the Moto X, what sets it apart from the other phones, is something that's not going to be available in Canada. In the United States, through an exclusive relationship with AT&T, consumers down there can use either an online program or go into an AT&T store and customize their phones through a range of colors as well as materials like wood. Here in Canada, that's simply not going to be made available. We're limited to what uh, Motorola describes as the classic choices of black and white. The curved back is made of rubber, there's a mono speaker located next to the rear camera, and the headphone jack up on top is placed in the middle. The 4.7 inch AMOLED screen is pretty, it's powered by 1.7 GHz dual core processor and runs Jelly Bean, that's Android 4.22. Missing is an SD card slot to expand your storage beyond 16 GB. If the phone detects that you're nearby through vibrations, it will occasionally pulse the screen with useful information. Initially it's the clock, but over time it adds icons representing incoming texts and emails. The idea is to save you from constantly picking up your phone just to check incoming notifications. You can turn on the 10 megapixel camera with a double wrist action like this, and then touch the screen anywhere to take a photo. By swiping the screen you can zoom in and out, or hold your finger against the screen to take a rapid succession of pictures. Motorola is using clear pixel technology for better performance under low light. And while all these quick access features do work with practice, I can see how for some people a physical shutter button is still best. Quick access is also behind touchless controls, a feature that allows you to tap into the Google Now service using just a vocal command. Your phone, even when it's asleep, is always listening for you to say the phrase, OK Google Now. From there you can have it place a phone call, schedule a meeting, set an alarm clock, or perform searches for useful information. OK Google Now, what is tomorrow's weather forecast? forecast for Toronto is 28 degrees with a thunderstorm. You have to train the device to recognize your voice and your voice only. This works well enough to avoid confusion with other Moto X phones, but there's always a chance that somebody might still trigger it. Okay Google Now, navigate to Canada's Wonderland. Navigating to Canada's Wonderland. It's no more accurate than Google Now on other phones or even Apple Siri, but it does support a number of creative tasks. Here you go. Some pictures related to cute pets. CN Tower is 553.33 meters tall. And it'll work in noisy environments like a car or even if the phone is just sitting in your pocket. OK Google Now, how many people live in Toronto? Seven billion is mentioned in results below. So the story that we're left with is that the Moto X is an excellent smartphone and easy to recommend. The touchless controls are fun, they're novel, and they're interesting. But none of the features add up towards being revolutionary. And at a time in which the market is highly competitive and already full of many excellent Android devices, it just doesn't stand out dramatically. If there is something special to come from this relationship between Google and Motorola, it's going to have to come from whatever they release next.